This is our college football week seven preview. We go through a list of questions, and I try and answer them. And we'll see how this goes. See if my voice holds up, because it does not feel great. So, <laughs> All right. Uh, question number one. <coughs> the biggest brand games. Who will get the highest ratings? I think Alabama-Tennessee this weekend gets the highest ratings. I think that's your number one spot. Uh, aside from that, Penn State, Michigan will be number two. I think Clemson, Florida State is going to get number three, with that being the ABC game at night. Uh, Iowa State, Texas is an ABC game, and that one's an early game. I think that that'll be number four here. Uh, Ole Miss, Auburn, number five on ESPN in the noon slot. And I do think uh, USC and Utah, the night game there, I believe on Fox, Uh I just don't think there's a ton of hype or care from the Pac-12, even about this Lincoln-Riley story. So I think that could get really tricky. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. We'll, we'll see. But I, I think Alabama-Tennessee will be the highest-rated game of next weekend. All right, the most exciting games for next week are the closest games, whichever one. I've got a few of them written down here. TCU-Oklahoma State I think is going to be – a whole lot of fun. I think you're going to see a ton of explosive plays because both defenses are bad at stopping them. Um, you got two really good quarterbacks. you got two suspect defenses and two coaches that like to, to score points. Just bottom line. Uh, I think that's going to be a pretty close game. You know, could be within a touchdown, something like that. I think that it, I think that's going to be the most exciting game of the weekend. Uh, BYU-Arkansas, that's another one where the total is pretty high now. And with KJ Jefferson back, I think that could be very, very interesting. <clears throat> so I will, I will roll uh, BYU Arkansas as one of the most exciting games. Memphis and East Carolina, one that not a lot of people are paying attention to right now, and I can totally understand it. But that is one where, uh, yeah, uh, there's a lot on the line for both of those teams, and I do think that uh, both of those offenses can score. I think uh, neither defense is great. Yeah, I will, I will take that to be exciting. Uh, a very close game. USC-Utah, that's another one that's going to be a, a tight game, I would imagine. Utah is favored in the game. Uh, there is a, a... The weakness of USC's defense is their running defense. Utah is committed to the run. So we'll see uh, how they're able to stack up. I, I think that USC should probably win that game, but if you have not seen the helmets that Utah is wearing, uh, there's going to be a lot of emotion in that building on Saturday night. I mean, Rice Eccles Stadium is going to be jumping for that one. So that one should be a lot of fun. Very interesting. How about another close game? Florida and LSU. That one is, I think that one has the potential to be an incredibly close game. I don't know that it's going to be super high scoring. You're not going to see a ton of explosive plays, whatever. But Jalen Daniels, Jalen Daniels, uh, Jaden Daniels, and Anthony Richardson, uh, just that matchup in and of itself is going to be a lot of fun to watch. And so I'm interested in that one. And finally, uh, it, this one I think could be very exciting. Western Michigan and Ohio, as far as big plays, like explosive plays, et cetera, I think that is one that, uh, I think that's one that could be really exciting. Really, really exciting. Who has the most to gain and who has the most to lose? That is an interesting question, right? I've got a few games here on this one. Um, the The winner of Michigan-Penn State, whoever that is, could still make the playoff even with a close loss to Ohio State. That is interesting to pay attention to. Uh, the winner, of course, still in the Big Ten race. Uh, really, the loser is still in the race as well if you can beat Ohio State. But uh, you're going to need the other one to lose twice. And I don't know that that's possible. So... I, I think whoever wins Michigan-Penn State uh, has the most to gain, and, and the loser has the most to lose, of course. Oklahoma and Kansas. Oklahoma needs to get out of the cellar now, big time. Uh, they're about to lose the fan base. They're about to lose uh, some players. That, I mean, just that things have been so bad. Uh, you need a win like this. So if you're Oklahoma, you got a lot to gain and a lot to lose in this. Kansas, much the same way. You just lost Jalen Daniels. Uh, you want to make sure that you are not just stuck on the mat, right? Like, that's the biggest thing. You want to make sure that that fast start to the season doesn't turn into what 2009 did when he started 5-0 and and then went 5-7. and 
right? So if you want to keep momentum, you need to you need to get a win over a not good Oklahoma team. That's uh, that's my guess there. Memphis and ECU, uh, with the, with the way that Memphis lost last week to Houston, giving up a nineteen point lead in the fourth quarter, probably need to go on the road and get this win uh, because it, you know it, they, people are talking in the background. I will say that uh, for East Carolina. Yeah, you got blown out by Tulane. I don't think that that's necessarily a bad loss. It's just a it, you you played poorly. Uh, you only scored nine points at Tulane, and, and yes, the Tulane defense is legit for sure. But that is one to kind of keep an eye on. Memphis at East Carolina, a lot of stakes in that game. Florida State and Clemson. Florida State started out the year undefeated, and now they have lost two straight. And now you got Clemson coming to town. This is kind of a uh, gut check time. Right, the, you know, if you're Clemson, you want to win this, and and you should be smooth sailing on the way to, um, you know, winning the conference. Basically, uh, like you you get this one out of the way, and you should be fine. A, a night game at Tallahassee, this is what Dabo Sweeney get started building towards when he first got the Clemson job. He wanted to make sure that they beat Florida State even in Tallahassee, even at night on national television. That's what got his program. On the map, and I think he's going to look at this as the same situation. They got a lot of guys coming back on the defensive line, uh, maybe some guys coming back in the secondary. We shall see. Um, but yeah, I th- this is going to be an interesting game for Florida State because you've already lost two in a row. Both of them, you know, you outgained yards per play the opposition. What can you do here? Like, if you lose three straight, does that completely dismantle all of the momentum that you had to start the season? It's much the same. The same as the Kansas situation, right? Um, I've got Syracuse on here against NC State. Syracuse is undefeated, 5-0. and If you beat NC State, even without their quarterback, that gets you to six wins. Dino Babers hadn't been bowling since they won 10 games back a few years ago. So something to pay attention to there, for sure. And I've got Tennessee on here. They got a lot to gain out of this. Uh, if they beat Alabama, they are a legitimate national title contender. Even if they were to lose to Georgia later on in the year in November in Athens, you could still reasonably get them in the playoff. Like, how, how crazy is that to consider? And you want to talk about a massive, massive game for a fan base? They have been waiting on this one for 16 years. I mean, it, it, the first year that Saban got to Alabama in 2017, Tennessee was ranked, came into Bryant-Denny Stadium, and... And Alabama had, I believe, four or five starters that were suspended for that game. <coughs> and Alabama ran them out of the building. Uh, kicked an onside kick on the opening play of the game and never looked back. I think it was like 41-17. to 17. Uh, it, was, it was rough. It was rough. So Tennessee fans have been waiting on a situation like this. Their closest games that they have played against Alabama have actually been in Tuscaloosa. So now they've actually got one at home where people think they've got a shot and they're undefeated. This is the first top six matchup between these two in history. I had no idea. No idea that. Um, Because both of them obviously ranked in the top six. They've never had it before. So it makes it even that much bigger. All right, moving right along. uh, we got two more questions that we're going to answer. Who is the most likely double-digit underdog to pull out a win outright? Who can pull an upset win outright as a double-digit dog? I've got three of them this week. On Friday night, I think Navy is a live dog against SMU. That SMU defense is bad. Uh, You can get Navy at plus 360 over at BetUS right now. Uh, That would be the way to go. So go on and check that out. Uh, Navy is plus 12.5. Nebraska, plus 13.5 right now against Purdue. Uh, this one is in West Lafayette. Do I think it's likely? No, but this team is fighting for Mickey. So I, I'm curious. Uh, but that's one just to pay attention to. Plus 420 um, against Purdue is the uh, the money line right now. But Nebraska's plus 13.5. And, and I tossed this one on there just because I think there's going to be a lot of high variance in this game because you got two bad defenses. Arizona is plus 14 at Washington. Do I think there's a more like a, a better chance that Washington blows them out? Yes. I think Washington is the significantly better team. Uh but with Jacob Cowing and Jaden Delora, et cetera, like I, I'm gonna k- 
kind of always put them in the spot because even as bad as the defense is, uh, if you somehow get some turnovers off of Washington, I don't. I, I think that Delora and Cowing can put on a clinic against this defense. So, I you know plus four forty, that I, that wouldn't surprise me honestly. I think that Arizona has a shot. So, uh, so the ones we're looking at for ten plus point underdogs winning outright: Navy, Nebraska, and Arizona. Watch out for those three. And then finally, the last one of the week. This is the G five games of the week. One I've already talked about: Memphis at East Carolina. That one, a lot of anxiety around that one. A lot of anxiety. I don't think Mike Houston has to worry about anything as far as his job is concerned at East Carolina, but uh. Silverfield might want to might want to pay attention. We'll see. San Jose State at Fresno State. That one is. I I think San Jose State is the best team in the Mountain West, and their schedule is super easy. And this was expected to be one of their most difficult games. I don't know that it is now with Logan Five playing, but they've been talking about Jake Hayner, and eh, we don't know when he's going to come back, etc. They did announce Logan Five as the starter. Why would you announce Fife as the starter so quickly? I, I'm just, I just—I wonder if Hainer's maybe going to come back in this game at some point. Just, just curious. Uh, and then finally, Kent State at Toledo. I think this one has all of the the makings to be a classic game. Uh, Jason Candle hardly ever wins the all the games that he's supposed to. Toledo looks like they are just going to kind of run through the MAC. But they they did get beat by San Diego State, who is a pretty bad football team. Uh, they they didn't look good against Ohio State, but who does? Uh, this just seems like one of those spots where Kent State, with that offense, they can find a way to maybe keep this game pretty close and then maybe find a way to pull it out late. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. So whoever wins this, probably going to uh, probably going to end up winning the MAC East. I think, um, but we'll see. Or I guess maybe maybe just the MAC overall. Uh, whoever wins this will probably win that conference. Just a guess. Just a guess. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.